Welcome back to Mint Money Bets, um, the gambling podcast that loses loses more money than it makes. Um, we're struggling to keep the lights on in the studio. Um, lost a lot of money last week. Today is Thursday. Losing day. Another podcast full of losers. Um, just cue the intro, man. Rolling, holds it, turns, through the lights. Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me? This is... Today, we're going to start the episode with a quote from one of the most inspirational athletes of all time, also a fictional athlete, Rocky Balboa. It ain't about how hard you can hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Um, and that's that's going to be our motto this week. Absolutely. For money yep. bets. Um, we're not going to talk about the merch today or any sponsors because, you know, you shouldn't buy it until we prove we can provide winners. Don't buy it. Don't you weren't buy the going to. We know you weren't going to, but. But you buy know it. what? If there's anything about a gambler that proves they can be successful, it's for them to find ways to change the mojo. And I, I think we found that way right now. Oh my God. Wow. If you're listening to this, you didn't see what just happened. That was bad radio, but, you know, we just switched sides of the table. We switched sides of the, the table. The board is so clear right now. <laughs> I'm seeing things differently. I was sitting by the fridge. That's why I was cold. Can I have my uh, computer back? Yeah, you can have your computer back, man. Um, I was sitting by the fridge. I should have been ice cold. I'm on the other side of the table now. I'm feeling like I'm going to heat up. Uh, everybody hopes so. Um, Me included. We're absolutely due. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and recap last week's picks. Do we feel good about them? No. Should we? No. Uh, did we have a lot of fun gambling? Uh, a little yeah, bit, yeah. but you know what? That's the whole point, right? We're just here to have fun. I'm just kidding. We're here to fucking make money. Yeah. We're gonna recap last week's losers. We're gonna move on from it. Sometimes you gotta take L's to make M's. Yep. We're recording this on a Wednesday, Wheezy Wednesday. Shout out, Lil Wayne. Woo we'll back Wednesday. So, what we're gonna go through on the show today? We'll recap last week's losers. Uh, we'll do a little <laughs> weekend recap for you guys down in Miami. Mister 305s right here. Uh, we'll go through our college week four picks. Dog of the week. Dog of the week's hot. It is. Just had a winner last that week. That is the one thing that is hot. We had two winners last week. Uh, new segment alert. Cue the... Wee woo, wee woo. Yep. Woo. Um, called Shower Thoughts. Fun one for you today. Actually got two new segments. Then we'll go into NFL Week 3 picks. NFL Dog Week, which is also hot. Yes. And then we will go into a, another new segment called Bill's Best Bets. Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. And if they lose, I want the Mitten Mob attacking him on Twitter. I'll drop the app. Yeah, it is actually Evan's dad. Uh, he thinks he's smarter than me. He's very rightly so. Uh, maybe he's more wise. I don't know. But eh. I'm coming this week, Bill. And then we'll wrap up the show with full cards. Uh, I'll take a 3-1 series lead in rock, paper, scissors. Why not? Um, but let's get right into the show this week. I'll start with my loser. Sure, I'll get it out of the way. Virginia Tech... Uh, inner Sandman is not even a cool tradition. <laughs> Screw you guys! Like you're the you're the worst. You guys can only play at home, I guess. Uh, they had, they were down twenty seven to seven. We were in Hard Rock Stadium. I was marking it a loser. It looked like a loser. They looked like the worst football team imaginable. You were checking ESPN every two minutes, saying fight. Yeah, I was screaming fight. Uh, people in the stadium thought I actually meant there was a fight. There was not. I just really wanted my Hokies to come back. They came back, rallied all the way back, 27-21, had four straight plays from the three-yard line, couldn't score, they didn't deserve to win the game, West Virginia took that, inner Sandman stinks, they blew it. Uh, moving into Minnesota, Colorado, another loser. Um, that was bad. But, spin zone, I would rather be dead wrong about a pick than lose on like a bad beat. Minnesota just went into Colorado and thumped them 30 to nothing. 
What are you going to do? Just like uh, in the USC and Stanford game. I'd rather be completely wrong. I'm a big clown for betting as PJ Fleck, I guess. Um, Col- but you know what? My bad. Did you know this? Colorado set a Pac-12 record last week. With? By sit- by scoring no points. You know what that record was? Mm, what? They haven't scored on 20 straight possessions. 20 straight. That hurts. Yeah, uh, Colorado. Ooh, ouch. Uh, go fuck yourself. Uh, Mel Tucker's not walking through those doors. He's a Spartan dog. Tuck's not coming. Tuck is not coming. And then finally, had a winner. Thank you, Tom Allen. You loser. <laughs> Indiana is who we thought they were. Cincinnati rolled in. Luke Fickle, college football playoff. He's coming. Thirty-eight to twenty-four. Michael Penix is a bum. You were scared at halftime, though. Yeah, Cincinnati looked terrible going into halftime, but Michael Penix threw three picks. He said, I also have Cincinnati spread. Mark is that he, as a winner. Is he the 12th man for Cincinnati? People are saying. He, he might as well just transfer. And then um, our dog of the week, our smart dogs, we'll get into it in the weekend recap. Talk is coming there. Easy winner. Yeah. Miami is never back. Use down Manny fraud as you are a bum. Yeah. Your college picks. Uh, started out with Coastal Carolina against Buffalo, and Buffalo is bad, but Grayson McCall fumbled twice, and to cover, Buffalo had a 16-play, 92-yard drive, mm-hmm. and then went for two, which covered the mm-hmm. 10 that I had because they lost by three. Um, mm-hmm. Spencer Rattler... Is rattled. I don't know what to say. I mean, he was playing like Spencer a, Badler. He was playing a, against a high school quarterback, and you know, Nebraska. I at this point, I wanted Nebraska to just win the game. Going into Sooner Stadium and almost upsetting them—that was disgusting to watch. Oklahoma, insert the insert the clip of the Oklahoma wagon tipping over. Yeah, yeah, it's inserted. Just kidding, uh, Oklahoma. Is not making a great statement for the playoffs. Uh, going into my Central Michigan pick, they literally made Max Johnson look like a Heisman candidate. He had 372 yards and five touchdowns with one interception. Uh, LSU had 15 more minutes of possession. That was tough. And I was sitting in a bar watching potentially a backdoor cover. Central had it, I think, third and 10 and then fourth and 10 at like the 25. Both shots to the end zone, both failed, so I just kept drinking. That was tough. That was Rightly so, and, and for everybody listening at home, I'd just like to say, don't worry, I will not let Evan bet on the Chippewas again after that performance. Against an SEC team. No, just not at all. Let's just stay away. I mean, that hurts. Hey, mm. it happens. Top 10 and team then, against the spread last year. Not man, New year, man. Fans in the stadium. A debatably better quarterback. Mm, no the starter really. last year sitting this year. I don't know why. Fine. Jim McElwain is whoever his last name. Jim McElwain, he's a bum. Okay, yep, got okay. it. All right, and then the next. my NFL picks. Uh, the Saints make no sense. Uh, they just went into Carolina and lost 26-7. to uh, My bad. I thought the Saints were good. They literally abused the Packers the previous week. Uh, Jameis Winston Hall of Fame campaign is going to take a hit there. Uh, don't worry. Minor setback, major comeback. He threw two picks, only 111 yards. Alvin Kamara, um, put him on a gallon of milk. Where was he? I don't know. Not in Carolina. Lost. I know that. That's a loser. Uh, Chiefs, I, I don't know. The NFL football makes no sense. I thought the Chiefs were good. Their defense is one of the worst defenses in the NFL. They can't stop giving up points. Uh, thank you, Clyde Odersolaire. This could have been a winner. Chiefs are marching. Um, Clyde Edwards Lara, thanks for fumbling the win away. Uh, and then big balls by John Harbaugh. Love that call. Don't give the ball back to Patrick Mahomes. Ravens win 36 35. Maybe the Ravens are good. Maybe Lamar Jackson's back. Finally got the monkey off their back. They beat the Chiefs. I don't know. And then finally, the Cowboys. Wait, that was that my last pick? No, Bills. Bills Dolphins. Bills, yeah. Wasn't even close at any point. It felt good to get a winner like that. <laughs> Bills won 35 0. Uh, did Tua get injured? Sure. Do I care? No. I don't think it would have mattered. Bills covered. Dolphins can't score. Dolphins stink. And then our Cowboys were our dog of the week. Absolute ref show. Part of me thinks that the 
the refs also had Cowboys money line because had to. Had to have. the taunting penalties, the ch- the the Chargers found invented new ways to get penalized that game. It looked like the Lions. Yeah, it was terrible. And also, Greg the Leg is so back. Nails the game winning field goal. Thank you, Cowboys money line. Cash a ticket. Thank you, DraftKings. I will start my NFL, my one and two campaign, with Rams not winning by four against the Colts. Uh, that felt bad. I thought Stafford was that dude, but I th- really thought Wentz was not that dude even more. Injured both ankles and they still covered. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, I don't really understand. I want to forget about that one. Uh, Lions and Packers. Oh, wait. No, that is my last pick. Okay. Uh, Cardinals minus three against the Vikings. I don't even know what to say there. I just want to take that loser and throw it away. Uh, forget about that one. <laughs> uh, my winner, my lone winner, Evan went one and five. I'm bad. I get it. This is my winner. But I called this exactly how it went. I said that the Lions defense sucks. Uh, I said I need. I picture Green Bay to put up 35 to 40, and, and I have in my notes. I just need the Lions to get 14 to 20, and this game's over easily. I was right. Aaron Jones personally had the over in that game. He yeah. was upset. Uh, super glad that I totally took Aaron Jones over three and a half all touchdowns. That was sick. Yeah, uh-huh. cash that ticket. Yeah. Um, Go. Thanks for me my fantasy matchup as well. <clears throat> um. So, yeah, recap. I went two and four. Uh, that's one more than Evan, so it feels good to at least be a winner there. Going into my last game, I almost thought it would be funnier to go 0-6 than 1-5. and Just yeah, but, on record. But once again, spin zone. Uh, Dave Portnoy, Big Cat, if you're listening – uh, just look at what we did this week. We got losers. Uh, we will gladly join the Barstool family. Also, I want to put a spin zone on my record, too. So mm-hmm. does your week start on Sunday, or does your week start on Monday? Monday. Okay. I'm 1-0 this week. I have not lost Whoa. a game this week. <laughs> Don't let us get hot. I've, I mean, Don't I, let us I get might hot. might be looking at an undefeated week. I mean, the boys need it, so we'll get started here with my, with our college picks. Um, this is very clearly becoming a Chanticleer podcast again. I just can't I can't stay away. I'm addicted. They're in there every week. Um, we're gonna go to Coastal versus um, St. Mary's School of the Blind, UMass. Uh, the spread's a little too high for my liking. This game, Coastal, I think has only covered one game this year on game day. Um, The spread's too high. I think it's like 36 against UMass. I'd just like to stay away from that. But I'm going under 67 here, and there's a couple reasons. UMass isn't going to score. Yeah, so the last two games UMass has played have gone over this total, but UMass played Eastern Michigan last week, and they've put up 28 points in two straight games. UMass has. UMass is offense. Coastal Carolina is not going to give up 28 points to UMass. Gave up a lot to Buffalo. That's Buffalo. Buffalo Come on. scored three against Nebraska. I, I don't. It's UMass. Pittsburgh beat UMass 51-7 and just lost to Western, so I don't know. College football makes no sense. 67 is a lot of points. It is. I think they're, the only way that this goes over 67 is if Coastal scores them themselves. That's all I'm going to say. The pick is Coastal under 67. Total is way too high. I believe it opened at 69, so I'm following the money there. All right. I'm going to follow that with Akron and OSU under 67 and a half with the exact same <clears throat> thought process. Uh, Akron is averaging five points a game this year, and OSU is averaging 30. I think OSU needs to make a statement with their defense, maybe make a shutout. I really... Do not think that Ohio State scores more than 55. I hope not. But uh, this is just an eye test. Uh, The spread is like 49, so I'm good on that one. But I will gladly be the no fun guy and take the under on 67 and a half because that is a lot of points against a team that won't score at all. Yeah, also I believe their D-backs coach is calling the plays now, and anything is better than Kerry Coombs. And CJ Stroud's bad. So they're not going to put up 56 points. I also think C.J. Stroud will be sitting out by, like, the third quarter. Quinn Ewer season. Yeah. Whoa. Yep. I like that. Um, and then we'll move into Rutgers, Michigan, the Fighting Shianus 
versus the Block M. I'm, I think, you know what? I, I'm a Spartan dog through and through. Welcome to Wolverine Wilkins Hour. Uh, all aboard the Blake Quorum hype train. I, he's, I mean... Oh. I mean, Eisman goat. Kid has kid has <laughs> kid has jets. Um, he has legs, but yeah. N- Noah Vedral's playing well. Rutgers might have a QB. Probably not. I mean, they're three and zero. That's the first time I've seen Rutgers three and zero in a long time. I think Rutgers is going to air it out. I think Michigan's going to run all over Rutgers. I all I see in my eyes, points, points, points <laughs> at the big house. The last seven games between these two teams have either pushed or gone over, over this total of 49 and a half. And Shianu likes being sneaky, too, with some uh, some trick plays. You know, last year he tried running, like, fake punts and weird kickoffs and stuff. Why not? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm staying away from the spread. I think Rutgers is going to cover this game. I think the spread's 20. There is a FanDuel boosted bet, though. Um, every bet for Michigan drives the total lower. Oh, so I, I think we're that. I think right now it's at six and a half on FanDuel. So get your money in if you think Michigan's gonna win. I'll wait till it goes to like two. I think that'll get to uh, Michigan money line by Saturday. But forty nine and a half, that's very little points. These two teams played last year, and I think the final was forty eight forty two in overtime. Um, I understand that was Joe Milton, that was a different team, but this Rutgers team is largely Kate unchanged. Kate did go in to win the game. Kate did go in. I like Blake Corm to run all over him, continue his uh, stellar start to the season. Give me Michigan Rutgers over 49.5. That's the pick. My second pick is UCLA minus five at Stanford. And I know Cody is overjoyed seeing his Fresno Bulldogs beat UCLA. But I think that only encourages UCLA to want to drop the hammer on Stanford. Um, they both allow 25 points per game, but UCLA averages 10 more points a game. So if you do the math, ba ba ba, UCLA covers. Uh, Thompson Robinson is like pretty good. The past two games, he averages 270 a game with six touchdowns and one interception. So as long as Charbonnet um, gets some good blocks and can pick up more than like 70 yards and open up the field, I think UCLA wins. And covers. Yeah. Yeah, they'd have to, yeah. Yeah, I think, yep. Yep. That's usually how that works. Stanford stinks. I'm dying on that horse. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that UCLA game, that was just, that was fraud. Um, and then finally, we're going to go, we're going to ride the boys. We're finally just going to, we're just going to let it all hang out here. In the woodshed. This, you know this is a fuck Nebraska podcast. It is. Night game in East Lansing. We don't get a lot of them. We're getting one this week. We're striping the stadium in East Lansing. The boys are buzzing. A lot. I'm seeing a lot of trap game. What trap? Scott Frost is a loser. Adrian Martinez is bad. Kenneth Walker looks like top two running back in the country. Him and Blake Corum right now. They're both in Michigan. I agree. You weren't agreeing with me this weekend when I was saying it, though. This. Well, the odds on Kenneth Walker for Heisman are higher than Blake Corum. I, I just I, like to I say was, that. Kenneth Walker can be three or whatever on RG3's whatever stupid-ass picks. Heisman watch, yeah. yeah. But I just need Corum in there at five. I just need him on the list. Yeah, I just think... It's kind of disrespectful not to put him on the list. Yeah, Peyton Thorne's playing really good football right now. Kenneth Walker looks absolutely unbelievable. Uh, the defense is finding their way. We finally have a linebacker that can cover the field. Um this is a revenge game as well. The last two times we played Nebraska, we've lost. We lost three years ago. We lost 9-6. Rocky Lombardi was the QB. And then we lost in 2015 when we went to the college football playoff on that garbage, one of the worst calls I've ever seen in my life when the Nebraska receiver ran out of bounds and came back in and caught it. Well, he got pushed out. He wasn't even touched. I mean, you can go back and look at it. We lost 39-38 at Nebraska. Mel Tucker's got the boys buzzing. Uh, Mel Tucker's going to come out. Scott Frost, hey, how are you? Like that. Spartans by a million. The pick is MSU minus five. Get it before it goes any higher. Get it before it goes to minus 20. It might get there on game day. It might. All right. Well, I decided to get weird because my college has not been hot. I'm going to die on the Oklahoma train, too. I'm going to take Oklahoma first half minus nine against West Virginia. West Virginia is absolutely on their high horse right now Yep. after beating a ranked team. Uh, they're going into Oklahoma. 
and they are going to collapse. Their defense is good. Is it as good as Nebraska's? Because Nebraska held Oklahoma to like 20-something. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I just, I, you know, I need this as a winner. I need Rattler to, like, step up and be like, oh, yeah, like, I am, like, a Heisman candidate. I can throw the ball. I can do something. Mm-hmm. He had one touchdown last week. I need him to be better, and I need West Virginia to just fuck off, just for, the like, the first half at least. I just, yeah, I mean, I just think everybody overlooked Nebraska because they are bad, and Spencer Rattler just didn't care. He's probably out partying in probably, Lincoln. You know, or not, Lincoln, not Lincoln. Lincoln probably has wherever smokes, Oklahoma. right? Yeah, yeah totally. I mean... Lincoln is in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Anyways. Cody's an idiot. Um, yeah, I think they'll get up for that game. First Big 12 game of the year. Why not? Sooners just, by a million. Boomer it, Sooner. It has to be. Um, yeah, so those are our college picks. And then our college dog of the week. Take it away, Evan. FAU at Air Force. Air Force is bad. We're looking at you, Wyatt. Go fuck yourself. The best service team is the Army. Everybody knows that. Um... The Air Force is too weak-minded to play grown-up service football and just run and just pound the rock. Yeah. They try to be too flashy. They try no. to be those guys, and they're not. I don't need that. Willie Taggart has the boys absolutely buzzing in Florida Atlantic <laughs> University. It's weird to say that I get it, but FAU is a four and a half point dog to people who just fly planes all day. So. They don't play football. They just fly planes, right? Yeah, I mean, FAU spends the most Forces. of their time on the beach, but... At least it's on the ground. They probably throw footballs at the beach. Can't throw a football That's on the plane. That's true. You can't, you know, you're too busy flying the plane, yep. losers. Yep. Okay, yeah. Give us give us FAU. Give us the Owls. Why not? Um, so, those are our college picks. But we'll get into a little weekend recap for you guys. We'll keep it PG. We won't get too in-depth here. Well, we didn't have too much fun. Yeah, Miami's really lame town. Yeah, uh, would definitely rather live in Michigan or Pennsylvania. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, or like Afghanistan. Uh, yeah, Kansas. So, Kansas, yeah, Iowa, somewhere. I just yeah. Midwest is the best. We're just gonna move past that comment. <laughs> um, Miami. Uh, a lot of booze was consumed this weekend. Yeah, uh, like those forty-eight ounce margaritas on the beach. I was the only one man enough to drink two of them. You had fucking ice cubes in your first one. That was like a quarter of the... But I had a frozen one, too. The the slushy, like, texture. You just can't just consume, like, two of those. Because you guys weren't drinking them fast enough. Obviously, when a slushy melts, it's not going to taste good. How about you drink it, then? Why are you babysitting it? It didn't didn't taste good. I'd hate to be Mm, the guy, but I got a Miami Vice because everybody else Mm. got one. I got peer pressured into it, and it just wasn't great. Didn't it have coconut in it? Yeah, it did. You don't like coconut. coconut. You're a clown for ordering it. I just, Almond Joys are trash. Come at me. Okay, yeah. Almond Joy CEO, come on the pod to discuss. Yeah, sure. I mean, anything with coconut in it, just take it out. Okay, that's fair. Um, Trying to recap the weekend. First night, we lost power. Uh, don't know if you know this, but air conditioning is very important in Miami, Florida. <laughs> very. It is the most. We were one of 43 houses in Miami that lost power. What are the odds? We literally lost in every scenario this weekend. Yeah, I thought. Except for the state game. I thought I could go outside and it'd be a little bit cooler. Nope, I was wrong. It was hot as fuck outside. Uh, we couldn't finish watching the Thursday night football game. That was my own personal fire fest. Power ended up coming back. Power did come back. We had a mini party at about 2.30 a.m., and then we decided to... We played, know. like, hide-and-seek. It was, it was getting weird. All right, yeah. Um, um, I think we woke up on Friday, and we collectively looked out the window to see two iguanas, and we were like, are we still gonna, drunk? Today's going to get weird. There's two iguanas in our pool. Don't know where they came from. I didn't know. I, I didn't realize Miami was in the tropical rainforest, and there was iguanas there. I didn't know either. Um, we went to Fort Lauderdale. Had our margaritas, then came back, played the pool football game of the century. It was like the what's it was it the Olympic like basketball like the greatest game that nobody ever saw. Yeah, that's basically what it was. If anybody was filming it, it would have been must see television. I felt like Aaron Donald for probably thirty minutes. Yeah, Cormac feeling got absolutely abused. Was absolutely rushing to six apple. I don't know how we settled on that tough terrain. I know everybody's feet. That Pink, we were feeling pinky, it. Yep, Pinky took a tiny blow. It was a long day. And then um, went to the club Friday night. We won't discuss. Eldra got lost ended up walking home for a little while. Yeah. 
uh, found my way home, took grit. Um, yeah, it happens. And then Saturday, <clears throat> went to the game, tailgated it. Don't know how. It was a million degrees outside. I was sweating as soon as I left the Uber. I actually turned my shirt <clears throat> up to make a crop top. I felt it looked like, like Ezekiel yeah, Elliott. I was going to say, I felt like Ezekiel. Like Ezekiel Elliott, because I was showing a little bit of love handles. Happens. Yeah. Um, and then went to the game. Was never close. Nope. Derek King is terrible. Manny Diaz is a bad coach. Yep. Kenneth Walker's great. Yep. Jalen Naylor, Peyton Thorne, Spartan Dogs. They were our dogs of the week. Uh, and they won. And they won. They did their uh, job. The boys were buzzing. We went to find an Uber. It was raining outside. It was more humid. We still partied. Partied our faces off. Both Evan and I didn't go to sleep uh, Saturday from Saturday night. into Sunday. Boarded <laughs> a flight at 7 in the morning. Watched NFL football at LaGuardia. We were down atrocious. <laughs> I, was, I still don't think I've recovered. Uh, yeah, we tried to get breakfast in the Delta Sky Club. Uh, I'd like to formally fade them. They had eggs, yes. No bacon, no sausage, no pancakes, no waffles. Bagels, had, I guess. They had fruit bagels they and parfaits. F- okay, it was like 5 in the morning. I just want like a nice cup of OJ and like a couple pieces of bacon. It's and cutting waffle. season, Called though. It. I don't it's give cutting a shit. season. I don't care. I'm on vacation. No, I, Carbs don't matter. I stay in the Delta Sky Club. Big big fan. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the weekend. Um, we'll see if we can recover by another weekend of drinking at the Spartans night game. <laughs> um, to be continued. Now, moving into... These are all business trips, though. We, we go to the games. Yeah, it's a business trip. I only go there because Spartans are undefeated when I go, so if I just keep going to the games, they can't lose. I'm can. pretty sure that's how it works. Yep. Um, but moving into a new segment alert, new segment alert. Wee-woo! Beep, beep, this beep. segment is going to be called Shower Thoughts. Now, this is just crazy stuff that we think about in the shower. Some woes. Um, so our first one here is, have you ever thought about how... If somebody just sat down and ate six like mozzarella sticks, like the string cheese out of the fridge, the like laughing cow ones, and just sat down and ate them, you'd probably look like a psychopath. Yeah. But if you go to a restaurant. Applebee's. You, if you go to Applebee's and you're like, hi, I would like the mozzarella sticks. The dynamic is completely different if they deep fry them, serve them with, <laughs> with marinara, marinara and ranch. And you're like, oh, this is a great warm up to my meal. I will happily eat those. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy to me because I can easily put down eight of those. But yeah, yeah, and then you can still you but, still but have room for chicken have, wings. I have one string cheese for lunch some occasionally. That makes it just it makes no sense to me. All right, that's interesting. And uh, then it, go ahead. One of mine was: Have you ever thought about when you say, "Oh, Cody, let's go play catch"? Why don't we call it, "Hey, let's go throwing"? Because you're throwing just as much as you're catching. Whoa. Something to think about. Here's another one. We talk about Halloween candy. Halloween's coming up next month. Get ready. Um, Plan your costumes. There's only one actual Halloween candy that's like seasonal. And that's candy corn. All the rest are sold year-round. Snickers, Three Musketeers, Twix. All of them are sold year-round. There's only one... And it's the worst. It's the worst ambassador for Halloween. That's a hot take. It's not terrible at first. You candy can, corn is bad. You can eat too much of it. There's two. The two worst candies. You don't just love going to a pumpkin patch and are, grabbing a handful of no. candy. Could be either. <laughs> it's exactly. But I, I've seen people do it. Okay, those people are the, the only other worst candy One is Peeps at Easter. Peeps are horrible. I would argue jelly beans, but I do hate Peeps. There's some fire jelly beans, some little jelly bellies. <laughs> yum yum. Um, so that's shower thoughts for you. New segment. Anybody has you do you have one more for us? No, I don't. Looks I'm like just you're... I'm just trying to like get myself ready. Hopefully I, I I might not show my face if I have another week like last week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. That I mean I'll, yeah, just wear, just... I'll just wear a Manny Diaz mask as a clown. Yeah, or we could just start wearing like plastic bags everywhere we go. I don't know. Yeah, maybe Whatever. Can tighten it too. Yeah. Get nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Suicidal money. Um, so that's shower thoughts. If you guys ever have any, send them in. Drop a couple woes for you guys. Um, knowledge to the people. Moving into our NFL picks. I'll kick us off. Cardinals minus seven and a half. 
I have two reasons. Trevor Lawrence is bad. He's an absolute <laughs> interception machine. He was a fraud at Clemson. A He's fraud a fraud at now. Clemson. Oh, Jesus. He's a fraud now. Urban Meyer is never going to work. He needs to go. He needs to go take that USC job right now because this Jaguars thing is not going to work out. I don't actually mean that Trevor Lawrence is bad, but he has like no actual weapons. You can say he's bad now, but he's Marvin Jones. He, he doesn't have an offensive line. Well, he couldn't beat Ohio State. Look how bad they are uh, at Wyatt. They they did beat Ohio State. Mm, not last year. The year before. I'm not counting that year. <laughs> Recency bias. Jesus. Also, Kyler Murray's incredible. I don't know how they they only lost to the Titans because Derrick Henry is literally everybody's father, and yeah. he just said, "Fine, I'll do it myself." Thanos meme. Um, Cardinals minus seven and a half is the pick. They're gonna hammer the Jaguars. Jaguars are terrible. There's no more explanation Sounds needed. I'm not even. Me. I'm not even gonna drop a stat on your head. I'm I'm about to do the same thing with Steelers minus three uh, at home against the Bengals. Let's not overthink this one. Uh, Steelers defense is unreal. Uh, Bengals offense is not a lot, but it's something, something bad. Uh, Bengals average only 200 yards passing and 100 rushing, and I don't think that's going to happen this week. Uh, Yeah, yeah, they, they, um, they don't have a good offensive line. Yeah, I think if the Steelers get to 24, it's an easy cover. I don't think the Bengals will score more than 17, I'll say. The only question mark is half the Steelers, including T.J. Watt, has a groin injury right now. I don't know what they're putting in the water over there. I don't know if that that Suns IG model is like in the Steelers locker room. If Those who know, you know. Um, I don't know why their entire defense has a groin injury. I think T.J. Watt, he's probably one of the grittiest human beings alive. I think he's going to find he's a way to play. play. He's, he's going to be – yeah. He's going to be all over in Joe Burrow's face. I was just texting him Pause. yesterday, and he said, bet on us. I'm going to get three sacks. And yeah. I said, okay. Adam Schefter's on the pod. Welcome, Adam Schefter. Okay, thank you for that insider info. No problem. Um, and then my next pick, Lions, Ravens, uh, two bad defenses. Both defenses stink. The Lions are averaging 38 points, giving up a game. They have the worst linebackers in the world. Their corners are bad. Uh, their pass rush is meh. It's all right. Uh the Ravens are giving up 34 points a game. I know they play the greatest team, the greatest show on turf, the Raiders right now, and the Chiefs. But Jared Goff, I think, is adequate. I think Quintez Cephas might he might do a little I will something. Die this on game. the hill of Cephas. He I'm might, riding with Cephas. He might do a little something this game. I think Lamar's going to have his way. He looks a lot better throwing the football. He's going to run all over those slow linebackers. Yeah. Alex Anzalone is literally the worst rated linebacker in football right now. I would agree. Um, the pick is Lions Ravens over forty nine and a half. There's gonna be points flying in Ford Field on Sunday. Yeah, I really wanted to see what Lamar's rushing yards were gonna be at, but they uh DraftKings doesn't have player props right now, otherwise it would have taken the over. No. Yeah. Happens. Uh my next pick is gonna be Cowboys minus three against the Eagles. Uh neither team's defense is good enough to hold the other offense for the whole game, and the Cowboys have a better offense than the Eagles. Uh, C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper together is a pretty good combo on the outside. Uh, Dak has the advantage as far as quarterbacks go if this comes like down to the wire. Uh, don't think Jalen Hurts is that guy, but he's enough to get Philadelphia to that next guy. Um, Dallas is 4-1 and one against spread in the last five against the Eagles. Uh, just run with it. Dallas is hot right now. They're better than everybody thought they were going to be. The corners are playing well. Dallas, 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 Dallas. Diggs is playing very good. Shout out Jordan Lewis, Michigan grad. Yep, 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 shout out. Um, And then finally, my last pick. Packers are back. They got their swagger back. I think part of the reason they lost to the Saints is Aaron Rodgers. You know, he came to camp late. He was doing his little holdout, like, oh, he might retire. You were never going to retire, Aaron. Um, I just think he looked a little rusty in that first game, but he looked pretty good. Got to heat up a little bit against the Lions. Aaron Jones looks like the best running back in the world. Scored four touchdowns. We referenced that earlier. The 49ers, I don't know what's going on in that running back room, but every year they're made of glass. They need to find new trainers there. I don't know who their running backs are going to be. Uh, they're just on the L.A. diet. They just keep they're different. finding new I guess they're vegans. I don't know. Yeah. People do weird stuff in California. I think the 49ers have one weapon. Brandon Ayuk hasn't played well. Uh, they have one weapon. It's Debo Samuel. But, you know, who's guarding? Debo Samuel, Jair Alexander, one of the best corners in football. Um, I'm taking Packers plus three and a half. Absolute travesty that 49ers are even favored. This is Sunday night football. Aaron Rodgers shines on Sunday night football. It doesn't make sense 
why San Fran is favored. Yeah, I mean, they're playing well to start the year. I think it's a trap game. I think if they could get the pass rush to Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers is good enough to to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Um, Sprinkle Packers money line. Also take them with with the field goal, plus three and a half. My last pick is going to be the Browns minus seven at home against the Bears. Uh, Dalton is banged up, so this might be Fields' first start in the state that he used to own, Ohio. Um, But... The Bears are 29th in yards in the league, and they're facing one of the best defenses. And I can't think of anything more terrifying than Miles Garrett running at me trying to get a sack. Mm-hmm. I think Justin Fields might shit his pants if he sees that. Mm-hmm. Um, all the stats favor the Bears, but I'm going to take the stats. I'm going to say, fuck off, go over there. Um, so I'm smarter than Vegas, and this is a winner. Browns minus seven. Cut to next week where the Browns win by three. Yeah, I mean, I think at the very least that's a push. I like the seven. If it was seven and a half, I'd be very scared of it because it just it seems like something Browns that they would. Also, Landry is questionable too, so the spread dropped down a couple. It opened at. But they got DPJ, baby. Michigan grad, shout out <laughs> Wolverine Wilkins. I mean, the, the Browns are going to run all over them too. That's fair. Cleo yeah. Max going to be tired. Cleo Max old. Yeah. Raiders won that trade. Who's better now? Um. Okay, and then our dog of the week here. This might be a shocker. Buccaneers <laughs> are playing the best football ever. Uh, Tom Brady looks like he found the fountain of youth. Give me the Rams here, though, because I know, lifelong Patriots fan here, if there's one way to beat Tom Brady is pressure up the middle, get him a little rattled, get somebody in his face. Oh, who do the Rams have again? Aaron Stafford. Donald, oh. one of the best defenders of football. Defense, yeah. Pressure yeah. up the middle, get in his face. Um don't give him time to release the ball to his targets, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Also, the Buccaneers' secondary looks horrible. Well, who's Ramsey going to guard? Mike Evans? Ramsey will probably be on Evans. He, he usually just stays on one side of the field. He doesn't really go with guys. Okay. I think the Buccaneers' secondary is very bad. Stafford and Cup look elite together. They also haven't played like an offense. I know they played the Cowboys, but they almost lost that game. They're coming off of a game against the Falcons where their defense shined a little bit, but yeah. they, they're they also playing Matt Ryan. I feel like when I when I first saw that game, Tampa Bay was up by like four or five, and then before you know it, they have 41. Yeah, they, so two I'm picks, not really sure what happened. Two there. pick sixes from Matt Ryan there. So uh, Matt Stafford's not going to make that mistake. I think they're going to be able to, to you know apply some pressure. To Tom Brady getting his face a little bit. He's not as mobile as he ever was. So give me the Rams here. They're only I think one and a half point dogs. Uh, give us Rams money line there. It's, at not, home it's not the juiciest one, but LA. it's still one. Oh, and this is a tip you're not gonna get from other podcasts. This is Tom Brady's first game in LA. I'm feeling weird. I think he's gonna have some problems I think at he SoFi might be Stadium. Feeling weird. Yeah. Facts. Don't hate it. Um. So that's our show. Go ahead and recap my board here. So what about BBB? Oh, new segment alert. I forgot. Woo-hoo. It wasn't in my show notes. This is BBB, also known as Bill's Best Bets. Bill Eldred, listener of the show. He came to us. He thinks he's smarter than us. Prove it, Bill. This is a prove it week for you. Yep. You want um, What are the picks? You know, he came to me and he said, Evan... I see you didn't too hot, do too hot last week, and I said, shut up, Dad. And he said, you know, I, I got some wisdom for you, and I'm going to drop it on you. And I said, Dad, if you really believe in yourself, Mitt and Mob's going to storm you if these lose. He came to me, and he said, Mississippi State plus two and a half against LSU. And then he said, Evan. If they that, swamped them last year. They did. And he said, Evan, if that's not good enough, Wisconsin minus six against Notre Dame. <laughs> Just gonna leave it okay. at that. Okay, what? Mississippi State. Yeah, I guess, I guess I can see it. Cowbells. They're playing at home. The those are annoying. I could see what where LSU would get rattled. Moo. Okay. Cowbell. Moo. You know what I'm saying? Got it. Uh, yeah, nailed that. And then, I guess the advantage here is Wisconsin's playing. They're playing at Soldier Field, so that's that's a matter of what team travels better. And Notre Dame hasn't looked like well, that's Notre Dame. closer to Notre Dame. Uh, it's like kind of in the middle. Milwaukee is like 30 minutes from, and South Bend's like two and a half hours from Soldier Field. Hmm. 
Geography. Yeah, this is also coming from the guy that took Marshall last week. I'll just throw a little shade at Bill. I think he took Marshall minus seven, and Eastern Carolina went out right. So, prove yourself, you know, Bill. You know, you're going to point that out. I think it's only fair to say that Bill did say he also picked West, West Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, country roads. Virginia Tech should win that game. Um, so, those are Bill's picks. Wisconsin, minus six and a half. And, and Mississippi, State Mississippi State, plus, plus two, and two, and two and a half. Why not just take the money line, Bill? Scared money don't make money. So thank you, Bill. Uh, if he doesn't go 2-0, and if he goes 1-1. One and one, We're attacking him. We'll just give out his phone number. But if he goes 2-0, and o, you can tip Evan directly. Uh, he'll give the money to him, right? Yeah, I'll yeah. give it right to my dad. Yep. Okay, perfect. So my board for the week, just to recap here, Coastal UMass under 67, MSU minus 5 at the Woodshed, Shred Stadium, fuck Nebraska, uh, and then Rutgers, Michigan over 49.5, Blake Horm Hype Train. Uh, and then NFL... Oh, and our college dog of the week is FAU. Go Owls. NFL, Cardinals minus 7.5 against the Jaguars. Lions, Ravens over 49.5. And, and then Packers plus 3.5 at the 49ers. Okay, and my board is UCLA minus 5 at Stanford. Akron at OSU under 67.5. Uh, West Virginia at Oklahoma. Oklahoma minus 9 first half. Very important to remember the first half. Uh, Steelers minus three at home against Bengals. Cowboys at home minus three and a half against the Eagles. And the Browns at home minus seven against the Bears. I picked a lot of home favorites. I really hope it pays off. That's the show. The boys need winners. Um, If not, who knows how long we can keep the lights on in the studio. They're flickering already. The AC already ran out. Fridge is bare. There's a bear in here? Rock, paper, scissors, let's end the show. Mm. Oh, got you. A little trick for people. Oh. Motherfucker. <laughs> 3 1, baby. You're 1 0 this week. I'm 1 0 this week. Let's ride it in. Let's go 12 0. Mint money. That's to the, the episode. Yep. To the moon.